diagnosis remains stronger than ever. My family's support keeps me strong. Together, we're rising above heart failure. Heart failure doesn't have to steal your strength. For simple steps you can take to help prevent, improve, and manage heart failure, go to riseaboveahf.org. Deidre Malone. Um, I hope you're having a great Wednesday. I truly am and so glad to be right here on the M1 TV network. If you're following us at all on social media, you know, specifically on the M1 TV network, Facebook page or Twitter, or on the Dialogue with Deidre um, Facebook page or Twitter, you know what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to talk about sexual harassment. You've seen a great deal of discussion about sexual harassment in the news as of late. Um, it really kind of broke out with, um, with the um, producer, uh, Weinstein, and it's Harvey Weinstein, I believe that's the gentleman's name. And then from that, you've, you, you know, we've heard last year about President Trump and well, former, you know, candidate Trump and his 12 women that came out to say that he sexually harassed them. Now you have a candidate for the U.S. Senate in Alabama, Roy Moore, who you have at least five women coming out saying that when he was a, um, an attorney general um, for a part, a district attorney general in his 30s, that young women as and they weren't even women at that point probably 14 13 14 year olds that he sexually assaulted and harassed them um this is not something new it is something that has been happening over the years and i want to take you back about 26 years ago where a lot of you will remember this there was um a supreme court nominee who currently is a Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who was accused by attorney Anita Hill of sexual harassment in the workplace. I just want to remind you through a couple of clips that we have how those congressional hearings went back then. Um, and I think that you're going to see more of that happening today. But the question is, have you been sexually harassed? And if so, I want to hear from you. And if so, what do you think are some of the solutions to sexual harassment? Because it can clearly be stopped. We're going to have that dialogue. You're watching Dialogue with Deidre. Eddie, right now, do me a favor and run the uh, three-minute clip on Anita Hill at that congressional hearing. During this period at the Department of Education, my working relationship with Judge Thomas was positive. I had a good deal of responsibility and independence. I thought he respected my work and that he trusted my judgment. After approximately three months of working there, he asked me to go out socially with him. What happened next and telling the world about it are the two most difficult things, experiences of my life. It is only after a great deal of agonizing consideration and sleepless number, great number of sleepless nights that I am able to talk of these unpleasant matters to anyone but my close friends. I declined the invitation to go out socially with him 
and explained to him that I thought it would jeopardize at what I, at the time I considered to be a very good working relationship. I had a normal social life with other men outside of the office. I believe then as now that having a social relationship with a person who was supervising my work would be ill-advised. I was very uncomfortable with the idea and told him so. I thought that by saying no and explaining my reasons, my employer would abandon his social suggestions. However, to my regret, in the following few weeks, he continued to ask me out on several occasions. He pressed me to justify my reasons for saying no to him. These incidents took place in his office or mine. They were in the form of private conversations, which not, would not have been overheard by anyone else. My working relationship became even more strained when Judge Thomas began to use work situations to discuss sex. On these occasions, he would call me into his office for reports on education issues and projects, or he might suggest that because of the time pressures of his schedule, we go to lunch to a government cafeteria. After a brief discussion of work, he would turn the conversation to a discussion of sexual matters. His conversations were very vivid. He spoke about acts that he had seen in pornographic films involving such matters as women having sex with animals, and films showing group sex or rape scenes. He talked about pornographic materials depicting individuals with large penises or large breasts involved in various sex acts. On several occasions, Thomas told me graphically of his own sexual prowess. Because I was extremely uncomfortable talking about sex with him at all, and particularly in such a graphic way, I told him that I did not want to talk about these subjects. Do you remember that? I mean, I remember that congressional hearing as if it was yesterday. I was glued to the television because I just couldn't believe that this type of behavior existed. Um, and then to hear, he was a judge at the time, he's a Supreme Court Justice now, Judge Clarence Thomas's respond response to her allegations infuriated me. And so we're going to hear a brief clip of what um, current Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas had to say as a part of these um, congressional hearings. You remember a familiar term um, where he talked about lynching. Eddie, roll that clip. All right, we're going to have in Telco. The committee will please come to order. Judge, it's a tough day and tough night for you, I know. Let me uh, ask, do you have anything you'd like to say before we begin? I understand that uh, your preference is, uh, which is totally and completely understandable, that we go one hour tonight, 30 minutes, on each side, is am I correct in that? That's right. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Senator, I would like to start by saying unequivocally, uncategorically, that I deny each and every single allegation against me today that suggested in any way that I had conversations of a sexual nature or about pornographic material with Anita Hill that I ever attempted to date her, that I ever had any personal sexual interest in her, or that I in any way ever harassed her. A second, and I think more important point, I think that this today is a travesty. I think that it is disgusting. I think that this hearing should never occur in America. This is a case in which this sleaze, this dirt, 
was searched for by staffers of members of this committee, was then leaked to the media, and this committee and this body validated it and displayed it at prime time over our entire nation. How would any member on this committee, any person in this room, or any person in this country would like sleaze said about him or her in this fashion, or this dirt dredged up in this gossip and these lies displayed in this manner? How would any person like it? The Supreme Court is not worth it. No job is worth it. I'm not here for that. I'm here for my name, my family, my life, and my integrity. I think something is dreadfully wrong with this country when any person, any person in this free country would be subjected to this. This is not a closed room. There was an FBI investigation. This is not an opportunity to talk about difficult matters privately or in a closed environment. This is a circus. It's a national disgrace. And from my standpoint, as a black American, as far as I'm concerned, it is a high-tech lynching for uppity blacks who in any way deign to think for themselves, to do for themselves, to have different ideas. And it is a message that unless you kowtow to an old order, this is what will happen to you. You will be lynched, destroyed, caricatured by a committee of the U.S. U.S. Senate rather than hung from a tree. Amazing, amazing. That's all I can say. And that was a younger Joe Biden. And as early as, um, when was it? On the 14th. What's today's date? 14th. Um, in the Huffing, the news in Newsweek, Joe Biden says he's so sorry for Anita Hill's treatment, and he believes the allegations against Clarence Thomas. So um, we appreciate that today, former Vice President Joe Biden, because you were really tough on her, and that committee was really tough on Attorney Anita Hill when you know she sacrificed a lot to take a position and take a stand um, against a man who, put, who right now is, is one of the most powerful men in this country being a Supreme Court justice. And so um, when I think about and, and doing the research on this story and I think about the fact that even in 2010, seven years ago, okay, now this happened 26 years ago, but seven years ago, Miss Virginia Thomas had the audacity to call Anita Hill and leave her a message and ask her, and let, me, let me quote, the message that she left on attorney Anita Hill's voicemail was, good morning, Anita Hill. It's Jenny Thomas. I just wanted to reach out across the airwaves in the years and ask you to consider something. I would love for you to consider an apology sometime and some full explanation of why you did what you did with my husband. So give it some thought and certainly pray about this and come to understand why you did what you did, okay? Have a great day. Well, you, she, she did what she did because the man sexually harassed her, Miss Thomas, and, um, very proud of the fact that she's still speaking out today against sexual harassment, and more women need to do it. Um, what is sexual harassment, you may ask? Harassment, typically of a woman, but it doesn't necessarily have to be of a woman. There are women who sexually harass men in a workplace or other professional or social situations involving or making someone feel unwanted um, sexual advances or obscene remarks.
look at look at that picture right there. If you saw the other side of that picture, there's a guy who has his hand on that young lady's um, shoulder. I, I I've been in situations, and and I know many women have, <clears throat> where I can I can tell you at least two situations. One, when I was a student at Jackson State University, and um, living with my grandmother down in Mississippi. That's it, Eddie. That's the photograph. And my grandmother trusted this man to take me back up to school from, from Utica. I'm in the truck with this man, and I'm going back up to my university. And the guy, he's married. He actually tries to touch me. Now, in a situation like that, you're in a closed setting. You're in a truck. He knows my family, and he still tries to actually touch me. And me being 18, I said to him, you don't do it. Don't touch me. I'm going to tell my grandma. Um, and he was scared to death. Um, but just think, anything could have happened in that car. Um, I eventually got to school. I did call my grandmother and tell her. Um, he apologized profusely, but still. Anything could have happened. Since I've been an adult, um, you know, I was at an event, and this guy really, really, you know, I'm a friendly person, can have a conversation with the doorknob, and a guy came on to me who I never thought in a million years would come on to me. It happens. But what do you do? You tell him, I'm not interested. You need to back up off me. Um, if it's in the workplace, let me tell you what you should do. Having served as um, a vice president for one of the third largest healthcare charities in this country, an employee came to me one time and told me about um, another employee, high ranking, that actually came on to her. She laughed it off, she was older, she laughed it off, and I said, it's not funny. And because you reported it to me, legally, I have to report it to HR. And you are well within your right to report any type of sexual harassment to HR. Let me tell you, here is something that you need to be aware of. The sexual harassment is a form of sexual discrimination. It is against the law. If someone sexually harasses you in the workplace, Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 deals with that. It applies to employers with 15 or more employees, it, including state and local governments. It also applies to employee agencies and labor organizations as well as the federal government. But let me just say that even if you work for a small company, you shouldn't be sexually harassed. Um, unwelcome sexual advancements, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical contact of a sexual nature constitutes sexual harassment. You've seen it. There are people who've been in front of you have, who have made you know, lewd and inappropriate jokes um, or inappropriate acts. And what do you do? You feel uncomfortable. But what do you do about that? If you're in the workplace, you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to tell your supervisor. You're supposed to tell your HR department. If nothing happens, with that, you're well within your right to contact an attorney. It's always good when you have proof of the sexual harassment, but even if you don't have proof, it's good for you to at least let somebody know. Here's something that um, I can share with you, some steps that you should, you should be able to take, okay? <clears throat> Talk to the person directly. When the initial sexual harassment incident takes place, ask that person to stop harassing you. Now, if you like me, you're going to say it loud and you're going to really mean it. I remember one client told me one time, Deidre, nobody's going to really try and mess with you because you are no nonsense. <laughs> and I laughed and I said, you're absolutely right. Um, but it did happen. If your harasser continues displaying the same behavior, inform your harasser that you plan to file a report if the behavior continues. Some people will stop at that point, but then you have others who just feel like they're invincible and they won't stop. 
you can find other victims of sexual harassment and you can also find witnesses to help with your case. Search for those victims of sexual harassment um, by your harasser. You may find that some other victims have filed complaints in the past and that might help support your claim. Inform your supervisor. That is so key because if it's happening to you, it could potentially happen to someone else and you don't want that behavior to continue, right? Um, and if you don't share it with your supervisor in the HR department, it is bound to continue. Contact senior management. You can contact the Equal um, Employment Opportunity Co Commission and let them know. And if none of that works for you, then contact an attorney and file a lawsuit because that is one way to um, make sure that you have justice. Um, sexual harassment is now something that's being talked about clearly because of what's happening in the news today, but it has happened for years, and it will continue to happen to you if you don't do something about it. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back and finish this dialogue. You're watching Dialogue with Deidre on the M1 TV network. My mom is stronger than anyone I've ever known. Growing up when life got hard, her strength helped pull us through. Even after her heart failure diagnosis, she remained stronger than ever. My family's support keeps me strong. Together, we're rising above heart failure. Heart failure doesn't have to steal your strength. For simple steps you can take to help prevent, improve, or manage heart failure, go to riseabovehf.org. For centuries, the hopes, dreams, and promise of this great nation has been shaped by the African-American experience. Now comes a museum to honor this legacy. And finally tell their story. Tell all our stories. A story of courage. A story of achievement. The story of a great American people continues. Help us make sure it's heard. Hi, I'm Venus Williams. You know, I heard recently that the two main reasons for not getting an annual mammogram are limited access and fear. I know that there are low cost and even free screenings at some hospitals and clinics. And I've even heard of mobile mammogram units in some areas. Talk about service. Look, I know getting a screening is not as exciting as shopping, but life is for living. So take the first step to breast health, get the mammogram. For more information, please visit BreastCancerAwareness.com.
Did you know that hypertension is a universal risk factor for heart disease and stroke? The leading causes of death and disability in the United States. You can reduce your risk by remembering three words, check, change, control. The American Heart Association wants you to take control of your heart health with the help of the Check Change Control Program, a free online health management tool available at heart360.org. It's free, it's easy, and it's up to you to take control of your heart health. Find out more at heart360.org. Welcome back to Dialogue with Deidre on the M1 TV network. Thank you so much for watching V Banks. You're always tuning in. We appreciate you. And I just want to read this message from Carmen Johnson. Carmen said that sexual harassment happens daily in the workplace. Don't be a victim. Carmen is saying, don't be a victim. Be a survivor. Your pride matters. Report this abuse. It is so important. I mean, sometimes, you know, we have the knack for um, being insecure and being afraid, and we're all, you know, concerned about whether or not we could potentially lose our job if we report um, this harassment, because it has happened. But I'm telling you, you're going to be more safe if you do report it, because your business is going to be so afraid that you may file a, loose, a, a lawsuit because some employees, you know, may feel like they're not protected in the workplace. I want to go back to what's happening in um, with Roy Moore. Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, came out yesterday, and it was an article in the Huff Post, and you've seen it all over um, the television news. And he says that he thinks that Roy Moore, who is the Republican nominee for the U.S. Senate coming out of Alabama to replace Attorney General Jeff Sessions, um, that he believes the ladies who said that they were sexually harassed by um, Roy Moore. And when a reporter asked him directly, though, and as a part of that news conference, if he believed the women who accused President Trump of sexual assault he said the conversation is over. Did you hear what I said? He said the conversation is over. He didn't have a problem saying at this point, because more women are coming forward, five women coming forward, saying that Roy Moore sexually assaulted them or sexually harassed them. Um, but when you mentioned President Donald Trump, and there were, I said 12 earlier, I, I was mistaken, it was 16 women accused Trump of sexual harassment um, and uh, leader, Senate leader, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said he wasn't going to have that discussion. He'd be happy to address any other further questions, but not that. I'm telling you, women, you need to be vigilant, and men, I mean, you know, there was, a, there was a funny movie that was um, out a couple of years ago with Jennifer Aniston, and she was a dentist, and, uh, and she was sexually harassing one of her employees. It was a comedy, but in real life, it's not funny. And women sexually harass men as well, but it's more apt to be men sexually harassing women. And in some instance, instances, um, there's same-sex sexual harassment. None of it should be tolerated. So um, thank you so much for tuning in today. 
Um, we'd like to hear your stories. If you've been sexually harassed, sexually assaulted at, in the workplace or in a social setting, inbox me. We will continue this dialogue next week. I won't share your name, but I will talk about your incident. And um, my hope is that you sought some type of rep retribution, that you contacted your HR department, you contacted your supervisor, that if none of that worked, you contacted an attorney um, and tried to make sure that your voice was heard. You've been watching Dialogue with Deidre um, here on the M1 TV network. And if you are interested in advertising on our network, you can reach out to me at Deidre at DeidreMalone.com or inbox me um, on um, Facebook or just email me or give me a call here at the office. We'd love to have your business on our network. Now, we're a non-for-profit. We're not profit. Not profit. We're not for-profit. And so with that, if you have like a fire sale or something like that, right, Doc? In kind. In kind. Uh, not sure we can run you on our network. But if you have a service or you um, own a business and you want to advertise on our network, our prices are very, very reasonable. And we, you can go to our m1tv.com um, network website. There's a media kit there, but we, in the next week or so, are going to be releasing a um, holiday media kit, one pager. So if you want to have your business or service on our network, reach out and let us know. We'll be glad to work with you. Um, some of us are very picky about who we want on the network. That would be Eddie and Doc. Um, you know, I'm the one that's pretty easy and and wants you on the network. So, <laughs> so we appreciate your support and we appreciate you watching. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in. You can always watch my show on Mondays and Wednesdays. We say at noon, but it's around noon, a little afternoon because Black Thought comes on before me. And we do know that Dr. Noel Hutchinson may go on and on and on. But we love it right here on the M1 TV network. So thanks so much for watching. And we hope that you have a blessed day and continue to watch us and let us know what you think about our shows. We want to hear from you. Have a good day.